the most beautiful gift my father gave me is as a young child to show me practically if you dream something you can make that a reality and he didn't just talk about it he did that Vanakam and Ode Pair Murali Sri Narayanadas. My parents met and fell in love while they were studying in the UK. Uh, both of them are from Sri Lanka. And um, they had me quite early and unexpectedly. Um, and they were young students um, and immigrants in, in, in the UK. So they sent me off to spend uh, time with my grandparents in Sri Lanka. Um, so I had my first birthday there. Uh, I came back uh, to the UK, spent some time, then went, got shipped off to my aunt and uncle in Canada, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, when I was six. Um, and then we traveled a bit in India, as my father was doing some business in India. So the, by, by the time I was seven, you know, I had a lot of interesting experiences living with different people, my aunts or my grandparents. Um, so that was challenging, not being with my parents, but it also really opened the world to me. It was the foundation of who I am today. I've been fortunate enough to live in a lot of places, but Canada really resonates with me um, with that experience because there's a lot of people who have that journey. And we're in this beautiful country with so many different multicultures. Um, so of all the places, this is, this is uh, definitely a place I can call home. There were a lot of challenges growing up in Canada when I first came here. What is our identity as we come to Canada? Who are we? You know, if we're Ukrainian Canadian, we don't want to lose our Ukrainian culture. Do we fully embrace into Canadian culture? You know, people go through these confusions. But another great experience in Winnipeg um, that really helped me find my identity here in Canada is, is Folklorama. For those people who are not familiar with Folklorama, it's this wonderful event that happens over two weeks in the summertime in, in Winnipeg. And there are different, they call them pavilions, of different cultures. And for a young kid trying to figure out uh, my identity in Canada, to see other young people like myself, you know, at the Japanese pavilion, for example, identifying as Japanese Canadian, going to the Irish pavilion and seeing people identify as Irish Canadian, at a young age, that was the impression I got of Canada. We, as a nation, always reflect back to, you know, Pierre Trudeau's introduction of this uh, concept of multiculturalism in Canada. And many immigrants, including members of my family, came to Canada for that multiculturalism co uh, concept. So it is a government policy, but it's also a reality of why people are here in society. I think as a third culture kid, and for, for those who are not aware of that term or that concept, you know, as a, as a Tamil Canadian, I don't specifically, I'm not entirely comfortable just in the Tamil community, not entirely comfortable in just kind of a Canadian community, if you can call that that. I'm this third culture. Um, so I don't fit in all, but I, I can kind of fit. And I think that really helps in terms of business. We believe at 369 Global, that it is this global thinking that is going to help us address global challenges like COVID that we just went through, which was a global challenge, like climate change, um, like food management and food security in the world. It's very difficult for a fish living in the water to understand the sky and the earth and the water at the same time. But someone who can navigate all three of those landscapes has a better perspective on what are the best decisions for all. And I think third culture kids fit into that category. And I also believe that Canada is the creator and nurturer of third culture kids. Again, going back to that multiculturalism policy that the government has, but the fact that the Canadian society is, is relishing and embracing that multiculturalism concept. We still have a long way to go. I don't want to give this idealistic uh, uh, view of Canada, but we have people here that understand that, that, that value that multiculturalism policy, and, and will continue to fight for it. I've been very interested in blockchain for a long time. Um, I, I had the wonderful opportunity to work overseas uh, in 2000 for almost 15 years in uh, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, a few years in Europe as well. And one of the early 
my early introductions to blockchain technology was on the smart contracts. Many of the challenges in uh, uh, the nations I men as, uh, mentioned, specifically the South Asian nations where I, where I lived and worked, the challenges of land ownership was, was a huge one. And as I was you know, researching and look at innovative things that are happening in business, et cetera, one of the concepts that came up was, was blockchain and these smart contracts, right? Um, having these smart contracts to really recognize the land ownerships of individuals in, in, in these countries where there was transparency, um, so there couldn't be manipulation due to corruption, uh, et cetera. So that was my first introduction to it. And, um, you know, of course, you hear all of these stories online, especially in the early days about Bitcoin and, and what's happening. And there was good, bad and ugly in terms of those concepts. But I always followed it, again, to the point of being a third culture kid. I was seeing what was happening um, in the world of technology uh, in these different countries and seeing, well, how does that relate globally? Um, in Bangladesh, for example, they leapfrogged into mobile technology. So as a result, the mobile innovation was tremendous. Uh, I ran a telco in the UK for some time, so I could see firsthand what was happening in this space. And the concept of a digital currency, even at that time, was, was very interesting. People didn't really develop it. Bitcoin was there, but they really didn't develop it into, um, into where it is today. But uh, it was early days, but that, that idea and, and the need for it was there. So how does blockchain uh, come into this? One is uh, foreign credential recognition. I think there's a huge opportunity for uh, uh, a space where credential recognition is uh, on, on a blockchain. The second thing, being a person in the education sector, is it is not about the curriculum. It is important, but the real core fact is the assessment. What is the type of person that you want uh, within your organization? You can't do that on an interview. You need to participate with them in some kind of brainstorming workshop or some kind of engagement where you get to know each other and you find out if you, you know, speak the same language. We talked about the needs in education sector for this global foreign trained recognition. Um, blockchain serves that. If you think about income, how do I generate my income? You know, blockchain serves that. So any newcomer coming here, I think the value is the multicultural learning that you're going to have. This, you got to think about Canada as some sort of MVP for the world. You come here to learn how do I interact with different cultures. Again, you can read the theory in terms of your DEI workshop, go look at some YouTube video, but come practically learn that living and earning in Canada, and then you have the skills that can help you uh, expand to the world. That's the opportunity Canada has to offer and, and this space of blockchain technology. The immigrant journey, I think, really helped me because it opened my eyes to the fact that it is all of us together, these multiculturalism, uh, multicultural perspectives that are gonna help us for the future. And being at this age and luckily being in a place of influence, I need to tap into that so that we can make the place uh, better for the next generation. Some advice I would give to newcomers coming to Canada and, and kind of thinking about the blockchain space, um, the sector, is um, definitely if they're thinking about it, they're, they're definitely on the right track. Because this is, if you think about the internet in the early days, this is, this is the next space. Um, so understanding this space is not only critical in terms of career opportunities and income generation, but I genuinely believe it's going to be as common as, as our email. Each person is going to have their block or multiple blocks as we have multiple emails. So the sooner you understand this space, and, and um, because it's going to be an everyday thing, the, the better it's going to be for you. My dad hasn't been doing uh, very well health-wise and was recently in the hospital for about a month um, and now uh, is living with me. My father is my father first. He's also my best friend, my 
mentor, my business partner. I have a very um, beautiful relationship with my father. Um, but it's very hard to see someone who you think of as like Superman to be in where he is today. I don't want to accept it, quite honestly. I don't think any child wants to accept that. But it's a reality and it helps me think about time, how precious time is, what we want to do in our lives with this time, what I want to do with my kids. My daughter Sophia is seven, my son Leonardo is five. Um, how am I, what relationships am I going to have with them? And for me it goes back to the point of there are many things we can enjoy, there's luxuries in this world, and we should enjoy them. I think that's nice. But at the same time, how do we give back to our family around us, the real people we are, uh, you know, who, who love us and who we love? How do we show up for them? We have all these ambitions outside, but, you know, change begins with you and then slowly the people around you. It goes back to gratitude for me and finding ways where, where I can serve. I, that's really where I'm looking to focus my energies and spend time with the people I love as much as I can.